Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Japan, land of... And... I'm sure everybody's noticed by now that Japan has totally dominated the Western media landscape with anime and their music becoming mainstream. Everybody's watched something that's Japanese. Everybody owns something that's Japanese. But have you ever wondered what kind of effect this could have on the American culture as a whole? All of this Japanese media being consumed by the youth? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. This question of what kind of influence is Japanese media having on American culture crossed my mind earlier this week when I was hanging out with some friends of mine. We were watching a movie and I had a little bit of a cold and I sneezed. And the wife of my friend looks over and says, bless you, to be polite. But then she says, someone must be talking mad smack about you. Now that kind of gave me pause because that's a very Japanese kind of wives tale. You know, like how we say, if you can't sleep, someone's dreaming about you. It's in that same vein. And she's not a anime watcher or by any stretch of the imagination. So she must have picked that up from somewhere else. So that's just one small piece, kind of a Japanese wives tale that's made its way into the vernacular of just an ordinary American person. So first we gotta talk about how we even got here. How did Japan get to become so culturally relevant in the United States. Well, as with most things in our modern world, it goes back to my special interest, World War II. So after the war, America opened up its market to the Japanese to facilitate free trade to keep Japan from going back to their old ways. So early on, Japan was producing cheap goods, but eventually they specialized and they started making electronics and automobiles and other consumer products. They excelled at this, and by 1973, their GDP was about 70% of that of the United States. So even at this time, we see Japan having a pretty significant impact on the American culture. Um, back in the 70s, American cars were vastly inferior to their Japanese counterparts. They were heavy, they were expensive, they were poor quality, and they had really low gas mileage. Whereas their Japanese counterparts were cheap, reliable, fuel efficient, and easy to maintain. So this forced auto manufacturers to change the way that they produce their cars. At this time, the American manufacturers were doing kind of a supply side uh, marketing strategy. They were producing the cars and then trying to convince the people of America that they wanted them. Whereas the Japanese saw what the people wanted and were producing it. This all actually culminated in 2022 when Japanese cars made up 40% of the American automotive market share. Now, this has gone down to about 34% in the last couple years, probably as consumer demand is shifting from reliable cars with good gas mileage to big cars, SUVs, pickup trucks are now the number one selling type of vehicle in this country. This massive success hurt American manufacturers and it scared the United States because there was talk that Japan's economy would overtake the United States in just a few short years. This caused the United States to enter into what was called the Plaza Agreement with the Japanese. We basically, we forced them under threat of losing access to our market to increase the value of their yen, thus decreasing their number of exports. That's a lot of technical economic jargon and, and rules and laws in there, but suffice to say, the United States forced Japan to stop being so competitive in the open market, and that caused their economy to stagnate, something that's still being felt to this day in Japan. But by this time, anime and other Japanese media had already started making its way over to the United States. It wasn't nearly as popular as it is today, but by the 90s, shows like Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, and even Evangelion started to be adopted by small groups of people and in the youth. In the early 2000s, as the internet was starting to take off, websites like 4chan and Reddit were becoming hotbeds for discussion of anime. Still, again, a niche interest at this time, but as it started to dominate internet culture, it then began to make its way into mainstream culture. And by the time the 2010s roll around, when Marvel movies are in full swing, superhero movies are popular with everybody, anime really started to solidify itself to today in the 2020s, where basically everybody watches anime. Everybody's seen Dragon Ball Z or Demon Slayer or Attack on Titan. It's not this niche thing anymore. It's really dominated American media. So you may say, so what? Japanese anime and music and television has made its way over here. The youth like it. It's going to become part of American pop culture. How does that really change American culture? Well, I think it's important to remember when we speak about culture, people tend to think of the food we eat, the music we listen to, the clothes we wear, right? These kind of surface level things that we experience every single day. 
Culture is really much deeper than that. It's those unspoken expectations, how you should conduct yourself, how men and women should interact, how parents and children should interact, how we should treat animals. It's those things that are what really deep culture is. And it's important to remember, the kind of media you consume absolutely has an effect on how you see the world. And so if you are a child and you're growing up and you're watching a lot of anime, you're going to start adopting a worldview that's really more in line with the culture from which it originates, which would be a Japanese culture. We actually already have an example of this happening in America once, at least. Back in the 18 and 1900s, American students were going over to Germany, and they were bringing back with them the German idealist ideas from the time. And that had a major impact on American philosophy. Things like transcendentalism, pragmatism, and even psychoanalysis became very mainstream in the United States. It's really too early to say how Japanese media is going to affect American culture on a deep level. But I think that there are at least two assumptions that we can make going forward about what it's likely going to do to us. First, I think it's going to make us more collectivist. Japan is a very collectivist society. They really put the needs of the group above those of the individual. And so I think that with the American youth consuming a large amount of Japanese media that portrays this, I think that they're going to become more collectivist. We may see this rugged individualism that has dominated American thought for the last 200 years may actually start to fall by the wayside in favor of a more collectivized approach to solving our problems, to moving society forward. Secondly, I think it's going to have a pretty profound impact on the way that men and women interact with each other. Japan is still very much a patriarchal society, and that's also reflected in their anime. I would say that while it's obvious that the characters in anime aren't real people, they're just cartoons, I would say that the men are more alike to their real-life counterparts than the women. The women are really a kind of manufactured idealized version of women in anime. Now this could actually be a good thing. Perhaps the expectations that the media will put on young people are things that are achievable and if you watch shows that are not totally degenerate but are kind of these more slice of life, uh, more wholesome relationships, perhaps it could be good for the youth. Maybe that can give them some positive role models whereas you know, in this country our media and then just the fact that we have such high divorce rates really doesn't leave a whole lot of positive role models for young people in terms of how to build healthy male-female relationships. On the darker side of things, if the anime that they're watching is less wholesome, they could just continue to use each other and view each other more as objects than I think men and women already do right now. So that's yet to be seen, but I think that it is going to have a drastic impact on how men and women interact with each other. No matter what kind of impact Japanese culture eventually ends up having on American culture, what is certain is that the relationship between Japan and the United States will continue to be strong going forward. Japanese media is an excellent example of how a country can use its soft power, that being the power that it has to kind of convince rather than coerce, to garner support. So going forward, I think the Americans are going to continue to be close allies with Japan because all of us grew up seeing Japan in this idealized, really positive light. We all like Japan, and so Japan will have a strong ally in the United States going forward. I think no matter what happens with the global framework, no matter how China and Russia rise, I think Japan and the United States are going to be like this for a very long time. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one.